largest ski and snowboard resort in the world, made up of two combined resorts, Les Arcs and La Plagne. It's also my third weekly vlog about working remotely from Europe so you can get more days skiing and boarding on the mountain during your ski season. It's a transition for me because my friends have left, so as my first week alone, I'm solo, and I'm also on vacation. Whoa, wait a second. I thought the whole point was to work remotely from Europe to preserve your vacation. True, but if you do this, I think you should also take some vacation time. So enough talking. Let's go for a run and I'll tell you why. All right, so this is in Les Arf. You've got some fresh snow on top of some crust, so should be interesting. So one of the issues when you are working remotely from Europe is that you can't take advantage of nightlife because you have to go work at 3 p.m. Europe time, which is 9 a.m. East Coast time. So you're all the way in Europe where there is some great skiing or boarding. So you might as well at least use a week to take full vacation and then you can take advantage of nightlife. You can ski or board a little bit later than you otherwise would need to when you're working. And as I've shown in some other videos, there's a crazy après ski scene here. And it'd be fun to take full advantage of it. So that's why I think you should take some vacation time while you're here. If you're gonna work remotely from France and rent an apartment, we need to talk about the bedroom and the bathroom situation. The bathroom situation is this, toilet paper. They'll usually give you one roll to start out with in an apartment, but then it's up to you to go buy more for yourself. They don't give you a supply like they would in the US. Second, why do I have a t-shirt on the floor? Most rental apartments in France are not going to give you towels or sheets unless you request it and pay for it. Let's not make it weird, bro. Look, that's just the way it is, so be aware of it. Last week, the owner raised it to us, so we paid for the service, and we had a bunch of people, so we wanted to make sure we had enough sheets and towels. This week, the owner didn't raise it, and I forgot. So I got here, no towels, one roll of toilet paper. I didn't realize that until I was about to take a shower. So I used my t-shirt as a bath mat and another t-shirt as a towel. Fortunately- Damn, you're cheap, bro. Yeah, man, I'm not gonna pay $100 for sheets and a towel. The local market anticipated people like me because they have towels for sale. Went over there, picked one up, and that's what I'm using as my bath towel, still using the t-shirt as my bath mat. Now, obviously the market is not selling sheets. So here's my solution for that. While the beds don't come with sheets, they do have like a duvet cover. Well, I've got four beds in this place and I'm only using one. So I can grab a duvet cover, stick it on top of one bed. That's my blanket, got my sheets underneath and I'm good to go. So you'll see, this is a really nice apartment. It's a two bedroom, two bath, ski in, ski out apartment located in the Plan Village section of La Plan. You've got bathroom number one. Bathroom number two has a full enclosed shower, which you don't always get in Europe. Bedroom number one, you could actually sleep four people in here. Bedroom number two, very tight. It's really just enough for two people to sleep. Got a little seating area with a couch, which is right across from the dining table with a big flat screen TV that has a ton of channels on it. Kitchen is very small, but it's got the essentials like a stove, dishwasher, which makes life easy. Directly across, you've got the oven, coffee maker, and of course, refrigerator and freezer. And one of the things I think is essential if you're gonna be working remotely from Europe for a long period, a laundry machine. There's a locker for your ski or snowboard equipment. This is a first floor apartment, so all I have to do is walk out, take a few steps, go down some stairs, then a few more steps, and I'm right at the locker. 
open it up, grab your equipment, and only about two or three steps, there are the sliding glass doors to go outside to the slopes. Now, no matter where I'm coming back from at the end of the day, it's ski in. But at the beginning of the day, if I want to go to this arc, I actually do have to walk maybe about 40 steps to a T-bar. But if I'm going to go to La Plaine, I can just simply put on my skis and ski down to the right. So how much does that run you? A two bedroom, two bath, ski in, ski out apartment at the third largest ski resort in the world. Well, 200 bucks a night, that's a pretty good deal, I think. Obviously, 200 bucks a night for an apartment like this can add up, but if you bring in a whole bunch of people, you could get that cost down to $75. Or you could stay at a lower elevation and get savings there. Or go for a place that's not renovated like this and you'll get savings there. The bottom line is that there are many ways to make this work from an economic perspective so that you can get more days on the mountain without using any vacation time. La Plan Village has very little in terms of entertainment. There are two restaurants, one really small market, a ski school, ticket office, and ski rental shop. That's it. I could drive to another village to explore, but I don't want to give up my parking spot. It's first come, first serve, and they're pretty much taken all the time. The alternative is to walk, but it's a significant walk, and I'm not sure I'm down for that after skiing all day. There actually is an after a ski scene near me, La Bergerie behind me. It's about a 15-minute walk from my place, or hang out here and ski back. So what am I doing for food this week? Well, I've already been to the restaurant and it is not good. So I'm going to do a combination of cooking myself and heating up frozen dinners. And let me tell you something, the frozen lasagna in Europe is no joke, at least in Switzerland and France. It is so good. I actually look forward to getting it whenever I'm skiing in one of these two countries. So I'm definitely doing two frozen lasagnas. Then they were selling turkey breasts like chicken. I picked it up, saw it was turkey and said, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna still cook it like chicken marinated it in some salad dressing, and it actually turned out okay. I'm also planning to make some gnocchi and maybe a frozen pizza. All of that is gonna be better than the one restaurant I have access to. Plus, I love the desserts. Chocolate mousse like you can't get in the US. Sold in individual snack packs like Jello pudding. Ben oui, la mousse au chocolat, c'est la perfection. Par comme ce vlog. Yeah, I'll give you that, Frenchie. The mousse is perfection. So if you're going to work remotely from France as opposed to Austria, Switzerland, Italy, one thing you'll want to take into account is the French school vacations. This week is the Parisian vacation and there are a lot more people than there were last week at Teen or the prior week in Italy. So if you're going to come for one week or two week and work remotely, then there is a website you can check for the vacations, it changes every year. So that's why you need to check the website. And if that's gonna bother you, that there are a lot of people, a lot of crowds, then take a look at that site and plan to work remotely in France when you don't have the Parisian school vacation. The Parisian school vacation tends to be at the prime time for snow, like in mid-February, like right now something to think about. Since this was the week of Paris school vacation, I know from experience that the traffic would be terrible. I left about 8 a.m. to head over to La Plagne, even though it's only about an hour and 20 minute drive. The French are aware that GPS may send you on back roads to avoid traffic, which is what it was doing for me. And occasionally you see signs with a GPS and a slash through it. And I was asking myself, does that mean I'm not allowed to drive on this road? How are they gonna know? I saw one police officer blocking a road so that only locals could go through. Google Maps definitely sent me on a shortcut route. And at a certain point I came to a barricade, not allowing anybody to go through. And I was only about 30 minutes away from La Plagne. So you're basically forced to turn around and join all the traffic you just passed and have that 40 minutes turn into two hours as you go the main route into La Plagne. The guy in front of me did go around the barricade. I'm not saying I did. I didn't. I didn't go around the barricade. That would be wrong. The lesson is traffic on Saturdays in France because of school holidays, particularly the Paris vacation, is no joke. Talk about crowded slopes because of French school vacation. Check this out. So I've got tons of channels on my TV, but they're all in French, which is actually fine by me because I speak French. The past couple of years, I've been German speaking Switzerland, Austria, 
Italy, and in the summer I went to South America, Spanish. I don't speak any of those languages, and all the TVs were pretty much in just those languages. So the same may happen to you if you come and work remotely from Europe. If you luck out, you might get a smart TV. That happened to us last week, and we were able to log in Netflix. Didn't think we'd be able to from Europe, but it worked well.